weather. Up 10 to 5.9. Pedroza weighed in one pound heavier, 149.5 to 148.5. Caballero, he is wily, he is rangy, he has a 5-inch reach advantage. And, of course, the age. Caballero, 9 years older, 32 years of age. Pedroza is just 23. Now for the introductions in our main event. Here is our ring announcer, Chuck Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, the officials assigned for the next contest of the night. The judges will be Dave Moretti, Bill Graham, and Lou Tabbitt. Your referee will be Richard Steele. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for Sports Screen Pro Boxing Tour main event of the evening, featuring 10 rounds of boxing in the welterweight division. Introducing, in the blue corner, Fighting out of Los Angeles, California, weighing in at 148 and one half pounds, with a professional record of 19 wins, three defeats, one draw, with 13 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Augustine Caballero. And in the red corner, from Henderson, Nevada, weighing 149 and one half pounds. His professional record consists of 30 wins, two defeats, with 29 KOs. He is rated in the top 10 by all three boxing sanctioning bodies. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the very popular Ingles Pedrosa. Pedrosa with a very interesting headgear, and it comes off. It's a good thing. And the referee will be Richard Steele. He will give the fighters instruction. Okay, I gave both of you guys instruction in the judge's room. I'm warning you now, obey my command. Take it, good luck. All right. Angles Pedroza and Augustine Caballero. It is scheduled for 10 in the welterweight division. You know, it's interesting. Both fighters turned pro at the age of 20. Caballero in 1979, Pedroza in 1986. Pedroza is now getting set for the start of his 33rd professional fight over the last less than four years. Caballero has been a pro for now 11 years, and he is now going to step into the ring. And for Caballero, he'll be fighting in his 24th pro fight. Definitely. That's, that's, it's ironic, but the thing is, uh, first of all, uh, Caballero had a lot of his earlier career south of the border, and sometimes a lot of fights go unrecorded. And so it appears to me, from the things I've been looking at, Caballero is a lot more schooled fighter than someone with 24 fights. He may or may not have had more of them, but he's certainly been schooled for longer. Caballero in the maroon-colored trunks, the taller fighter, Angles Pedroza in the sequin. Caballero a southpaw. Pedroza did a lot of sparring with southpaws to help him prepare for this fight, he was telling me. You talk about Caballero's inactivity. Two fights in 1981, one fight in 1982, three fights in 1983, one fight in 1984, and then he took a vacation, 1985, 86, 87, 88. Yes, uh, Caballero's uh, corner and, and he himself state that it was, they could not get a fight because no one would fight them. They were afraid to fight them. He must be the only man in the world that can go five years of finding someone to fight. Caballero with a good body shot, but we mentioned he is awkward. He is also very sly and experienced. And Pedroza is wild, and Caballero can use that to his advantage. Definitely. As, as he's been doing here, he stands back and watches uh, Pedroza and, le and lets him get off a little bit, but makes a miss and then just counter punches. Caballero fighting the fight that he needs to fight right here. Pedroza, I think, needs to get more aggressive and throw more punches. Pedroza really a street fighter just throws punches in fact I saw his fight against CJ Duffy back in 1989 and he hit the deck twice which Pedroja Caballero was a nice right hand counter there left hand counter there being a southpaw just about caught Pedroza and that could have been a good night Pedroza Pedroza has no qualms about getting up off the campus canvas and continuing he has done that in his last fights. As you step up in caliber opponents, though, you don't necessarily get that chance. Took a good shot there. Well, you see the ring ropes are quite loose on this small ring, and Caballero is doing a good job of scoring. Both fighters are here in round one. It's a very small ring, I noticed, being in there, Bob. Left by Pedroza scores. 
right by Caballero score. It's a small ring with, with heat lamps very low from the low ceiling, and it's a high action fight. Conditioning is going to definitely play a part here. 32 years old does not help. We now pause for a regional break. We come to the end of round number one. Pedroza against Cavaliero. It's scheduled for 10. Big right hand here by Cabrero. Catches that. Pedroza right on the button. But uh, it's, it's tough to defend against those punches coming at that angle being a southpaw. Pedroza comes right back out, though, and forces the fight at the beginning of this round. Yeah. Angles Pedroza backing up Cavaliero. Cavaliero with some nice counter punch into the body down there. And as you can see, neither fighter minds taking a few to get a few off. You're definitely right about that. From what I can see this, I can maybe believe that for five years they couldn't get an opponent for Cavalier. A very tough guy to fight and a very slick fighter. Well, as we mentioned, his last fight with Cavalier was August 14th of last year. He knocked out Vincent Petway, but ruled an no contest after Cavalier tested positive for drugs. Pedroza last fought on June 8th of this year in Reno. Fourth round knockout of Lewis Howard. A minute gone by in round two. These are welterweights. This fight reminds me of a fight I saw in New York between Chris Reed, a world-rated light heavyweight, against uh, Obel Mejias, fully Obel Mejias. And Caballero has the similarities with Obel Mejias. And Caballero is hurt. His mouth is wide open. He looks exhausted. He must have gotten hit with a body shot a bit earlier on. He's playing on Pedroza's mind here. He's trying to get him a little bit thrown off. And Pedroza just digging away. Over and right to start off this uh, low by Caballero. He's not going to help himself any by standing there taking those body punches for later in the fight. Put your head. Caballero backs into that corner. Go to right by Pedroza. I think Cabrero showed us there what he's doing here. He's playing possum a little bit, and he's coming for the bomb. He was buying himself some time. Caballero is showing what ring experience will do in being a veteran of the game. He really bought himself time. Their heads come together, and Richard Steele is warning Caballero. Good round for Angles Pedroza. We now pause for a regional break. Angles Pedroza and Augustine Caballero jaw at each other as they come to the... Sneaky little left hook counter here by Pedroza. Hurts Caballero and starts off the whole uh, one minute of... of Pedroza banging and Cabrero on the ropes. And we start round number three, and here comes Caballero. Oh, a big right by Caballero. Caballero coming up, putting up fire. He's hurt, Pedroza. And Pedroza loves this. What action. I think they're both hurt there. Pedroza's been cut. They're both cut. Cut over the left eye for Pedroza. And right eye for Caballero. Toe to toe, there's no, no shortage of desire to mix it up here. Caballero's got him talking his game, but Pedroza has him fighting his game. We took a bath in blood. Both fighters cut. Both on the same eye, too. You'd have to think that it might have been from a uh, butt, but they did have heavy exchange there. Yeah, because it's the left eye. Oh, big right by Caballero, just a bit short. Caballero lands a few more of those and leaving it up, but I think his cut looks worse at this point. Yeah, it's the left eye of Pedroza and the right eye of Caballero. Oh, 
Caballero right. exploiting that cut too. Just every punch is right on it. Oh, he throws and rocks Caballero. It's been a very close fight in exchange of punishment, but Caballero seems to be feeling the punishment more. He's showing more on him. You know, you would say that maybe this would change one of the fighters' styles that they're cut, but that's the way these guys fight. They both seem to be thriving at the moment. Big right counter by Caballero as Pedroza is coming in. Oh, another one. one. You'd almost think Caballero's hurt his left hand. It's the only thing he's throwing is his right. Maybe it's just because it's finding the mark. Sure is. If this isn't one of the best rounds of the year to date. Oh, has to be one of the most action-packed, definitely the most action-packed I've seen. That is the time remaining in round three. This one is scheduled for 10, but you kind of get the feeling. It may not be going that far, Bob. Close out. Closing seconds of round number three. We'll be back with more from Las Vegas after this. Big looping right hand by Caballero finds his mark again right at the beginning of that round. Set the stage for a great round of action. And it doesn't look like they're slowing up now. They start round four now. Pedroza with all the action. Caballero's hurt from the left hook. It's scheduled for ten. Tell you what I see, I see a lot more determination in Pedroza than I do Caballero. Those body shots now are starting to hurt. Everything seems to be hurting at this point. Thirty-two years old, Caballero's got to be feeling this. It's a long night. Those are hot lights. You hear referee Richard Steele yelling to Caballero, punch and get out. But the body shots right there. And look at Pedroja, he's laughing. He's saying no more. Pedroza doing what he should do. He's staying right on him and just continuing to punch. It's only a matter of time if this continues. This is the fourth round. We mentioned it is scheduled for 10. But Pedroza just railing away. Is Caballero throwing a punch in this round? Caballero smiling at him, but I think it's in the same vein as we have seen earlier. Both fighters have cuts along their eye. Pedroza the left eye, Caballero the right, just past the midway point of round four. I think age and inactivity are really showing here on Caballero. And if it was a year since his last fight and he won, I think it would probably be at least a couple until his next. Well, Caballero is yelling at Pedroza, saying you've got nothing. Well, oh, he's trying to bite him. Caballero tried to bite Pedroza there. <laughs> if he didn't have the mouth shield on, I'm sure he would have. <laughs> well, if we said he's a wily old veteran, looks like he's going to try anything. It's called a barn burner. Nice right hook by Caballero right on the button again of Pedroza, but didn't seem to bother him a little bit. Caballero makes Pedroza miss. It's been like this since the opening bell, folks. Cab Caballero pulling all stops, is holding on to the ropes, throwing the right hand and getting the maximum of leverage on his punches here. The referee has yet to see it, I think, because he hasn't mentioned it yet. We hit the final seconds of round number four. The cut on Caviar are really starting to look ugly. He's being bothered by it. You can definitely see it's opening. You see here Caviar telling Pedro that you've got nothing, but it sure doesn't look like it with a, knife, with a cut like that. He must at least have a knife if not some big punches, power, punching power in that left hook. We start round number five. Augustine Cavaliero, the southpaw, and the maroon trunks. Angles Pedrosa in the sequin. It has been a war. Scheduled for 10 in the welterweight division. Bob Papa along with Donnie Lalonde. This could be one of the most action-packed fights I have seen this year. 
Well, certainly, I don't think it's like the moment of action. Roe, but Rosa catches a really nice right counter coming in and lands one of his own. Non-stop action. Oh. How you doing, Bob? You need some, sh some shampoo. We're getting a shower down here with blood and sweat. It's amazing the punishment that these two guys have taken. This is only round five. Remember, Caballero is 32 years of age. Pedroza is 23. You wonder how much longer Caballero can continue. Now well, Pedroza is fighting southpaw. Caballero seems to really be reserving himself well, though, as you can see, being a veteran, he's, he stands in there and relaxes and really rests and then just lets the bombs go. They're working for him, but I don't know if they're winning the fight for him. Well, Caballero, a few times in this fight, in the third, second round, looked like he was done. But he did a good job of holding on, clutching, and slipping some punches to recharge. He's also rejuvenated himself. Oh, he's hurt. He's come back good and strong in a couple rounds, as you said, after he looked very hurt. In that exchange there, I don't know what Pedroza has for a chin, but it must be cast iron because he got hit as hard as you can, and he was coming right in. Cavaliero ducking right above us. And holding on here in round five. Pedroza's left eye starting to close up on him a little bit. Cavaliero scores off the ropes and then he ties his man up. There's a method to this madness. <laughs> starting to show a little bit. I was having a hard time figuring it out. But yes, he does seem to be setting, setting the younger fighter up and using anything he can. And now Richard Steele is taking a point away from Caballero. He's gouged him, he's butted him, he's tried every trick in the book. We now pause for original. Caballero and Pedroza continue to war near the end of round number five. Caballero comes back with another bite on the right shoulder and then the headbutt. He'll try anything. That's the second bite he's gotten off. Pedroza's is not happy about it. Richard, referee Richard Steele took a point away from Cavaliera. That was for the head, but I don't think he's realized that he's also a uh, a biter. He's a bit of a biter, this Cavaliera. How do, <laughs> how do you have it scored, Donnie, through five rounds? It's a very, very tough fight to score, but I just have to give it to Pedroza. Just on his workmanlike effort of just continuing coming forward and forcing the fight, but Caballero certainly has landed some bombs, and I can see the ref the judges seeing it differently. Well, they tie up again. On my card, the fifth round was the first round I actually gave to Caballero, but then he lost it because of the point. You're right, and that, that, that hurts a lot in the scoring. Ooh. Oh, and down goes Caballero. Big exchange. He's up at the count of nine. Another veteran-like move waiting till the nine count, but I don't think it's gonna help him there. He's hurt. There goes to show the youth there. Both men exchange this point in the fight. Caviar just doesn't have as much left. Oh, the Caballero scores a right hand. He scored a left and a right there. Pedroza getting a little bit sloppy. That's right, he's got to come back and just go to the body, go to the head, the same old stuff, but stay on him. They're getting a little bit wise to each other's hook bombs, but they still seem to be catching enough of them. Well, there's been some question about Caballero's heart and all of his inactivities. He fakes a bolo and then scores, but he's shown a lot here. He seems to be enjoying himself in here today. He's getting into this fight. Quite the showman. I'm enjoying watching it, but I can't imagine enjoying it being in there. Yeah, <laughs> only in the way that a fighter can enjoy such a thing. Caballero takes another. He's playing point. possum there. He's playing possum. Yeah, he scored a right. That's it. Pedroza has to go to the body to go up to the head when he's leaning back like that. 
as I'm sure he's learning a lot in this fight. Oh, big right hand by Caballero. Pedroza just keeps coming forward. Caballero can't hit Pedroza any better than that. He's hit him with his Sunday best at least a half a dozen times today. So you know it's not gonna be a one-punch knockout for Caballero. What a fight. So we come to the end of round number six. We're gonna stay right here. These rounds are flying by, it's so action packed. Now there goes Augustine Caballero back to his corner. In round number six. Good exchange of right hands there, but Pedroza caught him a little bit cleaner and right on the button. Big difference. He tucked in a little bit, and Caballero just got sloppy, kept his chin hanging out there. Nice counter by Pedroza. Caballero got up at nine, and there's Angles Pedroza. He's relatively fresh for a guy who's been in a fight like this. We start round seven. He's only Stand 23 years old, yeah. He's only 23 years old, Bob. Makes a big difference. Caballero's 32. He's also, I think, part of his ployer is to look tired so he can get off those sneaky right hooks. Remember, Pedroza is ranked third by the WBA, fourth by the IBF, and ninth by the WBC. He is 30 and two with 29 knockouts. That 30th knockout is tough to come by. He's certainly earning it if he gets it. Definitely the cut men in this fight have got to be. Cavaliero almost took a seat with us. Yeah, almost. you got to credit the cut men. Both fighters have had bad cuts. Pedroza along the left eye, Cavaliero along the right eye. Cavaliero's has appeared more serious to me. As Pedroza bangs away on the body, I thought on a number of occasions when Cavaliero went back to the corner, that cut, the, the fight was over. They seem to have closed it up real nicely here. Referee Richard Steele has earned his pay. Both men tired after what they've gone through through the first six rounds. The sports Channel taking care of our dry cleaning bills here, Bob. I think that we're getting pretty messed up here, and I don't know if that's part of the duty or not. We are soaked in blood. And with Cavaliero resting against the rope, and he'll just unleash a right. Pedroza definitely the fresher of the two, and again, youth, I think, is playing the big part. The Caballero showing the veteran experience by just laying back, resting, and just picking his spots. And we welcome those from Sports Channel Philadelphia who watch the Phillies and the Braves. Well, we've had more hits in this game than the Braves have had in a while. Augustine Caballero and Angles Pedroza are in round number seven of this Scheduled 10 round welterweight bout, Caballero and the Maroon Pedroza in the sequence. And these guys have gone toe to toe and thrown some unbelievable punches. There's only been one knockdown. Caballero went down in round number six. Bob Papa along with Donnie Lalonde. Glad you can join us from Las Vegas, Nevada. They have thrown many punches and landed many of them. There's been not only a lot of hits, but a few home runs. It just seems that nobody wants to go. Oh, big. Oh. You don't punch, uh, you, you don't get more leverage than that. Caviero putting his whole body in from one foot all the way to the end of the hand. Oh, and an uppercut. Pedroza seems to be absorbing it and holding his composure. He's a little bit dazed here, I think. What a fight. This is unbelievable. Pedroza, the one normally coming straight forward, being Let's backed up. At the end of round seven. Caviero playing possum. Big right hand by Caviero off there. And then a little bit of possum playing. But Pedroza isn't buying any of it. He seems to be right there, and he's not buying any of the, uh, the, the sh Well, Sports Channel America's Pro Boxing Tour is in its 15th month. It started in April of 1989. And this, by far, has to be the most brutal fight we've seen so far. I can't imagine a fight with more action. There has not been a moment where there hasn't been something happening. Some more body punches. Richard Steele hasn't mentioned the low blows. There's been a lot right on the belt. Caballero playing possum here and just kind of conserving some energy. Pedroza seems to be on to his right hook. He seems to be uh, finally caught on, not to just sit there and hold his chin out there to be hit by that right hook. And it's taken away Caballero's only sort of offensive weapon. Big punches landed by Pedroza there. I mean, can you imagine if there was some way to keep track of the punches in this fight? 
Computers couldn't work that quick, I don't think. There's been some heavy exchanges landing simultaneously. The youth, the Pedrosas held them in there, I think, and that's what's really been the difference here. Of course, he's got an iron chin to go along with it. You wonder how much longer Caballero can play possum and have it work for him. It's worked in the past few rounds, but there's only so much punishment a man can take. Yeah, I've been wondering that myself, and he seems to be hanging in there. But Pedroza, too, also has, has, uh, has re absorbed a lot of punishment in this fight. He's got to be feeling it also. This is round number eight, scheduled for ten. Pedroza's line is that Superman Davis can run, can fly, but he can't hide. I certainly see it, especially in a small ring like this, a hell of a war between those two if that's what he's looking at. First, he's got to get by Caballero. He definitely does. Caballero, with this, with this punching power and his coyness, is definitely in this fight. But on scorecards, with the point taken away in the knockdown, I see uh, Pedroza way ahead. With the five and a two-year layoff for Caballero, and they stated that it was because he couldn't get fights. At first, it was hard to believe. You could see here as he comes back, he's got Pedroza hurt. Pedroza cool under pressure, though. And Caballero is not finishing him off. I don't think he's got enough left. Near the end of round eight. Oh, he hurt his arm, Caballero. He hurt his right wrist and yeah. hand. He may have broke a bone there. He hit on such a weird angle. He's being counted. That's it, Richard Steele will stop it. Caballero's legs earlier were bothering him. I noticed in between rounds. And now his hand, I believe that he's got a very, very hurt wrist or hand, as Bob had pointed out. Now look at Pedroza in his corner. I don't think he knows where he is. He was staggering around as he raised his arm. What a fight. And there's Augustine Caballero, and he hurt his right hand or his wrist as he was hurting Pedroza. Pedroza has to be happy with this one. Nice to get out of a war like that. Well, I'm interested to he hear what he has to say. I don't know if he could really be happy with this. He wants a shot at a world title to go against an Augustine Cavaliero and to take this much punishment. Yeah. You have to wonder, too. At the same time, with an unorthodox fighter like that, and Caballero, Caballero being uh, the unorthodox fight here he is, I think that people understand. Let's take a look at the injury again. It's a right hand. It could be the wrist, it could be the hand. Just bounced off the top of the head. It could be any bone in there. I think, uh, from my experience, it could be any one of the bones in the hand where there's so many of them or in the wrist. But it was definitely right on the top of the head on a weird angle. And if there just wasn't enough support, take a look at it again. <laughs> He put everything into that punch. He and he was counted for a knockdown here. Richard Steele stepped in, and he gave him a count, and then Caballero could not continue. Take a look at his wrist and his arm. Blame Unfortunately, it looks like he may have broken a bone. Believe me, Bob, I've been in there, and I've been in this position, and it looks to me like there are some broken bones in that hand, and maybe not just one. Well, maybe we'll get a chance to hear from Caballero as well. Angel Pedrosa comes up with the victory. Let's send it up to our ring announcer, Chuck Hall, for the official Tom of the Stoppage. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, 2 minutes, 5.59 yes. seconds of the eighth round. The winner by a TKO, Ingels Pedrosa. Pedrosa now 31 and 2 with 30 knockouts, but this one certainly was not easy. 259 of round number eight taken to the limit by Augustine Caballero. We will hear from the principles of this war after this timeout on Sports Channel America.